Okay, so um, basically uh, business of self, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and push through the, the chart here. And it's open discussion. Stop me anytime and add your thoughts um, because it rounds out the conversation and just makes it uh, better when we get other people's thoughts. I got my son right here with me. Um, my daughter's at basketball practice. If any other kids are here, they can feel free to talk as well. So um, basically I'm going to throw out a question. Um, have my son answer it for me. Come here, man. Tell us about the first business you have owned. Myself. Okay, yourself. <laughs> and that's a, that's a profound question there because a lot of people don't see themselves as a business. And hopefully at the end, some people will be able to relate or just tell me I'm just way off in left field. Um, so chime in uh, wherever you want to. And then just going to talk a little bit, bit about the importance of business projections. So as a little learning vignette here, um, I got a couple pictures. Quite sure you guys have seen this one on social media before. You got three black men, all three different roles. Uh, one's a bailiff. One's an attorney, and the other one's a defendant for uh, some kind of a hearing or a case or crime. Then we have uh, two of my favorite people here, Venus and Serena, and they just experienced some new success. Then you got another picture of a young lady taking a mug shot, and I think her face says it all. It's like, how in the world did I end up in this situation right here? How did I get here? And the questions I like to pose is, do you guys think these are random coincidences um, as far as uh, where these people are in their lives at this point? Or do you think it's a um, question of fortune, who's fortunate and who's not? And I know you've heard the term blessed and highly favored before. And is it misfortune? Or are we looking at the manifestations of uh, results? Any takers on that? I feel it is nature, nurture, that aspect, because Venus and Serena Williams grew up in the hood. So yeah. they could have easily went down any path, but they had a father that lost teeth, took black eyes from the local gangs, and he pushed through it to see that his kids made it. Absolutely. So he yep, wanted everybody his kids knows. to be better than him. Yeah, I agree with you. Any, anything else? Key point, like she said, the father. The father was a big role in their success. Okay, absolutely. And, um, yeah, the lost teeth, I mean, I thought that was an awesome story. I heard about it, um, how he used to have to clear drug dealers off the tennis courts so they could practice. And one day he got beat up pretty bad um, for trying to clear a space for his daughters to practice. So um, I think we kind of in agreement that uh, where you end up in life is, in many cases, uh, results based off of, manifestations of what you're doing right now and when it comes to business that question I asked my son um, you know because I do a, a little bit of thinking I know a lot of you guys online think too um, you know when I started coming up with the thought man each of us is a business okay it started with the definition okay uh, I, right here I have up top the business Wikipedia it says a business is an organization or an entity uh, which each of us is an entity, a thing, involved in the provision of goods and services. Each of us provides a good or a service, whether it be the service we provide to our boss when we go to work. Okay, then Webster further builds on this by saying business is movement or action intended to uh, establish an atmosphere, and it reveals character or explains the situation. And then he also goes on to say that uh, serious activity uh, – is business requiring time and effort. And each of us require time and effort, and we never achieve anything if we become distracted. And down here at the bottom, I have a couple characteristics that I pulled down as well, uh, saying uh, business is characterized by economic activity. We're all involved in the economy, whether we know it or not. Buying and selling, we all buy things, we sell things, even if it's our time. We sell our time to our boss uh, so that we get a paycheck at the end of the week. And it's a continuous process, and we get up every day, and we have to drink something, and we have to eat something and nourish our bodies um, continually or we die. Uh, and it's, business is characterized as seeking profit, um, and that's, that's what motivates us. We all want to get ahead in life, and there are risks and uncertainties. My wife just went to go take my daughter to basketball practice. Leaving out driving in traffic is a risk, and it's uh, creative and dynamic. We are ever-changing. And 
Businesses are characterized by satisfying other people. Each of us seeks to satisfy somebody, whether we know it or not. Then there are social interactions. Uh, we want to be liked to keep people coming back. We want our wife to come home to us. We want our husband to come home to us. We want our kids to come back to us when they go out into the world. So there's that social. Then there's government interaction, even if it's just abiding by the law or breaking the law. So I think these characteristics uh, kind of wraps us all up uh, into being a business. Um, any, anybody disagree with that? Or any other thoughts on it? I have a thought on it, um, Gus. Um, basically, as you said, a business, like Jay-Z said best, I'm a businessman. That means your image and everything you do in life has to be how you brand yourself or market or something like that. So everything you said is perfect. Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, and, and this is why, you know, I like to teach my kids and even the kids that I coach on the basketball teams that each boy and each girl is his own business. Um, and, and I think that wraps it up in a nutshell. And by all means, y'all, don't make me talk too much. Um, now, when, when it comes to um, businesses, Regular businesses that we consider and think of, Tisha, come in here if you want to. All right. Okay. Tisha, shy. She ain't going to come in. But uh, when it comes to businesses, um, we normally think of um, businesses as far as uh, how they make projections and have business meetings. And basically what they do is they look into the future to make a guess on where they're going, where is this business going, is it going where I want it to go, and what's causing it to go there, and what is it that I really want to get out of this business in terms of profit? How am I going to get there? And why are we not getting there? And when will we get there? And these projections are all based on today, today's numbers, and based on what we're doing or what we're not doing and what, what we will do to, to change those things. So a typical business meeting, say at Microsoft or somewhere like that, you'll see them look at short-term profits, long-term profit profits, um, outside factors that are contributing to their current success or failure, and control measures to control that stuff. And they'll uh, throw up a bunch of metrics. Now, we're not going to go into any of these because it's outside the scope of what we're talking about, but they analyze. You know, nothing happens by mistake or by chance uh, in most successful businesses or with most successful people, uh, like Venus and Serena um, and other folks or the lawyer that we saw there or the girl that was uh, shocked beyond belief that she was taking a mug shot. So um, we're going to take these little uh, quad shots and sort of relate it. And these are my thoughts. You guys please contribute yours because I don't think I'm 100% right, but this is how I look at it. The business of me, uh, me as an individual, a person. Now, just like I said on that uh, one chart, businesses spawn other businesses. So say, for instance, a boy or a girl is going to end up wanting to have a relationship, and that relationship in itself will be a partnership, which is also a, a kind of a business. And then they'll spawn other children, and that partnership turns into a franchise um, uh, of people. Now, we can talk about those on another day, but right now we're going to talk about that first aspect, the business of me. And how I see these is, uh, you know, the quad chart, Health and fitness is something that we should uh, visit periodically in our lives. How healthy are we? Where is our health going? And and how fit are we? And are are our immediate needs being met? And if so, how are they being met? Are they being met uh, to full satisfaction? And then there are developmental projections. We have to look at our spiritual development, our educational development, our psychological development. And, and also our value system, is it growing or is it uh, decreasing? Are we losing value? And then there are those uh, outside factors, our investment in other people. Um, now, I don't want to just talk about my thoughts on these. A- anybody care to talk talk about that, that very first one? Um, sorry, let's back up a second. Health and fitness um, in terms of um, – in terms of – Engaging oneself on uh, where they're going. Any thoughts on that that aspect of uh, the business of self? I would have to definitely agree that health and fitness is key to being in the best physical, mental, emotional state, which falls under health and fitness, to be yeah. the best you, 
to provide that job, to provide that service, to earn that money. So if that's not under control, um, it leads to a laundry list of disease, various other areas of your life that can take a significant downfall. So I yeah. truly believe health and fitness is key. And if you guys are following me and my husband, we have been on a fitness journey. And truly, it just has made things – I used to hate to be in the gym with him. Now I actually love to be in the gym with him. And that is awesome. How did you go from hate to love? Well, can you explain that? It's, it's interesting. Um, like with him being in the gym, um, yeah. I used to compete with him, not realizing that his body structure, his mind frame, his reason for being in there were totally different than mine. I was there for the physical appearance, what I didn't like or appreciate about myself. He was there for moral support. Although he was hurt, my opinion, although he was hurt and broke down, he would still be in the gym with me. And he would lift 200 pounds while I'm lifting 30, and I'd be mad because I was too busy competing with him. So when I stopped competing with him and just looked at him as, damn, look at my better half over there doing his thing, then it all fell into place. That That is awesome. A- any other thoughts on health and fitness? Well, I caveat on that, too. Uh, basically, um, doing physical fitness or working out physical and eating right stuff because a lot of times people eat bad foods. So basically, if you eat bad foods, your body can't process and be alert and do the things you need it to do. But also, you got to yeah. remember your body release chemicals to basically keep you calm through the day so you won't be so angry. That's why I think a lot of guys in the um, – well, I come from real ang- angry because they don't do any working out. All they do is sit on the couch, eat, and they don't do no running. So how can their body release the chemicals they need to keep it calm and relaxed? Exactly. And um, just looking at, I'm not an expert at all, but these are just my thoughts. And by all means, the smarter folks out there want to help me out. But just looking at us and our origins as, as um, African people. Um, okay, I, I got a mirror here for a second. He's trying to get in. Um, let me see, see what's going on with him. Well, I'll, I'll let him try and figure it out. Can somebody uh, inbox a mirror with instructions or something so I don't have to hold everybody else up while I'm talking? But um, for, for my uh, my understanding of African-American people, you know, we are used to being free and running and ripping. If, if you look at us through our history um, during our time in Africa and Egypt, we were physically um, fit people just looking back um and some of the feats that we accomplished uh, throughout history, and just looking at us as athletes, uh, th- those of us that excel in those ways, if we keep ourselves going, uh, we don't run into some of the same problems uh, that a lot of uh, folks run into in terms of, you know, the, the blood pressure problems, diabetes, and all that stuff, because we're predisposed to some of those things just by nature of who we are and our origins, uh, being descendants of people who are vesi- very physically uh at, at the peak of uh, humanity. A- any other thoughts on that piece? Yeah, I would just like to add, add to that, you know, um, the whole health and, and fitness aspect in, in the overall concept of business of me, if your business, which is you, is not healthy and you're not fit enough to, to carry on and, and, and get those, those ideals to your kids and, and your family, that your business is going to fail automatically. If you want Absolutely. that to be able to... to to prosper and, and go on for generations. But that's something that we need to instill as a business of me. Just my thoughts. Yep. And, and, and you right on it, man. Um, because, I mean, I just went and ate some uh, pig feet yesterday because I love them. Is that what we used to eat growing up, <laughs> you know? And I, I like what you said about instilling certain things into your kids. Um, just because uh, mom and dad do it, a lot of kids feel like it's the thing to continue doing. The smoking, the drinking, and I'm, I'm guilty of uh you know, consuming alcohol from time to time. But when it comes to health and fitness, um, like we said earlier, it's manifestations. If you keep drinking alcohol and eating wrong and doing other things, um, you're going to end up in a certain predicament. It's just inevitable being uh, human beings, uh, organic material is is what we are. Um, So we got to look at projections and sometimes just like a regular business, uh, uh, um, like an organization that you would think of like McDonald's or Franchise or Walmart. Um, we got to look at those things in terms of where are we going? Okay, what is my current activity going to result in? Um, and let's, let's move on to immediate needs. Um, 
And my thoughts on immediate needs is how am I taking care of my immediate needs? Am I eating right now? Am I drinking? Do I have food and shelter? Um, in terms of projecting uh, future success, how do you guys see immediate needs playing a role in the business of me? Hey, guys, to Dante. I look at um, immediate needs as this is what's got to be done and this is what I'm going to do. These are like my what I call my priorities. Like me, myself, it, it sounds selfish, but me, myself, and I is priority number one because if I don't take care of that, I can't take care of anybody else. So it's making sure, you know, I'm up on my game at work. Um, I'm handling business. You know, I got all my ducks in a row. I'm doing what needs to be done to accomplish my mission. Yeah, absolutely. Any other thoughts on it? Yeah, I just wanted to chime in a little bit on that, too, because, you know, immediate needs also reflects right back to step one, health and fitness, because immediately, like you say, a house for, for me and my uh, my business that we living in, food for me and my business to, to, to strive and to grow. So uh, those, those all, to me, play a, a significant part in immediate needs. Absolutely. I, I agree with you on, on that right there. And and another one out there um, that just popped in my head just now, uh, do I feel safe in my current situation? You know, that that's another one. Uh, safety to me is an immediate need. Uh, when you're in danger, you need to address it right away. Um, any, any thoughts on that aspect of it? That's that's a whole nother, a whole nother webinar. Oh yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. It, it could be. Yeah, it could be I, I on there for days. <laughs> but it, I totally agree with you. Okay. Yeah, I push forward on that one. Then we'll talk about that one another time. <laughs> now, developmental. Uh, in terms of uh, these are my thoughts again, and you guys share yours because I don't know it all. I feel like we should look at where we are spiritually and where we want to go with it, and also educationally. And uh, and reason why I say educationally um, is because when you, when you look at things, I don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but right now there's a big rift going on in the country about jobs. Who's that just joined us? Jabari Jackson. Hey, how you doing, bro? Good. Uh, we, we're just talking about uh, the, the business of me, the, these uh, quad charts right here. We're looking at different areas, which aren't the gospel here, but areas that I brainstormed up earlier um, in the week on where I think each individual should periodically revisit himself on uh, from time to time. And right now we're just talking about developmental projections. We just talked about health and fitness and immediate needs. So in terms of developmental uh, I'm personally looking at spiritual development. Where am I now and where am I going uh, based on what I'm doing right now and, and what I'm not doing? And educational, same way, uh, because of what's going on now uh, in the country with new leadership in place and also the economy and where it's going, education, Malcolm X once said, is the key. Uh, and, and when you look at uh, technology and where it's going, lots of jobs will be replaced by robots, computers, computer algorithms, um, and machine learning is, is an innovating technology. And I can talk more about that one uh, offline if you want to. And psychologically, where am I now and how am I developing um, my ability to think? And I agree, Denise, knowledge is power. And my value system, how do I stand in terms of my current values? Am I gaining new values or am I losing values? Am I uh, downgrading my value system? A any thoughts on these? I know I got a couple spiritual guys online. Let's start with that one. You guys there? I'm not the most spiritual, but I'll say this. I feel like if you're not grounded, and if you don't believe in a higher power to help build you, to keep you focused, you're going to lose sight of you. And then you'll be that bad product sitting on the shelf that everybody just kind of looks past. So Absolutely. I feel like your spiritual, your spiritual need needs to be there and the desire to build yourself spiritually. 
you know. Yeah. I, I'm going to speak from experience. I hated to ask God for patience because I knew I wasn't ready. But he continued to give it to me because he knew I was ready. So not yeah. my time, but his time. You know, they have that saying, you know, make plans and watch God laugh. I did that. Okay. He laughed. Oh, yeah. Hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's just my little piece on spiritual. No, that is good. Any Anybody else on spiritual uh, projection and development? I'll, I'll go back on spiritual and speak on that. Basically, we have to have morals and have values. And a lot of times, if you don't have no morals and values about yourself, how can you develop yourself? That's just Absolutely. simple. Absolutely. And, and when we're thinking about development and all these ones I have listed here, um, look at it as, like we showed that business chart earlier, where are we now and where is our current behavior taking us? Uh, so any other thoughts before we talk about education in terms of uh, how a person's spiritual development or lack thereof can affect their personal business? Okay, we can talk about educational now. Um, why is educational development important? That's like that's that's your engine. That's what keeps you going. Like that, your what you know, nobody can take that away from you. And like projecting where where you where it is you want to go. What do I want to learn? What what is it that I want to master? What do I want to become the SME in? Like, that's value. We should all, you know, know a little bit about everything. Like, we live in a, it's a, it's funny, you were talking about technology replacements and stuff, you know. If 50 years ago I could bring somebody back and say, hey, I got this device in my pocket, then I have access to any information I want to know in the world. I can hit Google, I can hit Wikipedia or whatever. I've got it out there, and here it is, but I like to look at cat videos, you know. That's what our society's come to. But the business of self, business of me, you know, it's, I'm looking at what's the next thing coming out in my current career field. You know, what what new technologies are groundbreaking? You know, as far as education, like, hey, I just started school at George Mason working on my engineering degree, and I'm like, you know, I'm in there with these kids, and they're just kind of like, oh, they're on my phone, I'm on this, I'm on that. You know, they're on Facebook and YouTube and whatever, and I'm like in here looking at, you know, what's current in 3D printing, you know, what, what's going on. Educational, that's like, that's your knowledge base, like, and once you figure out what interests you and what direction you want to go in, no one can ever take that away from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any other thoughts on it? I'm going to just say as a businessman, if you basically um, talk about education, how can you um, communicate with somebody if you're not educated and understanding how to speak correctly? Because if you can't speak correctly, a lot of times people tune you out. So I'm going to just start with that point. If you can't convey what your thoughts are, and they always come in our rash, so you have to be able to have grammar. And Absolutely. Rhetoric. That's a good segue. I'm going to come back to, to that part about it, too, communicating uh, to others. That, that was uh, awesome. And any others on education before I push? Yeah, I, somebody said yeah. something. But. Yeah, I just wanted to just put my little two cents in on that as far as education goes. As far as business of me and that con whole concept, how you have to be able to have your knowledge base in order for your business to move forward. You have to know what it is that you are putting out there to the world for them to, uh, to them see your business as being successful or take you seriously in your business of me, you know. And it also, like I said, it goes back to reflect down to passing on to your kids so they can see that, hey, their mom here went to school here later on in the years, so there's no reason why we can't go to school, learn what we need to learn, and be able to be successful in society and not worry about what's going on as far as business of me goes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I saw, I saw um, uh, hidden figures yesterday uh, about the three black women uh, who helped push the space program forward. And there's one scene in there that stuck out with me uh, on education when the woman went to took her kids to the library and it was segmented off as a colored section and a, a white section. And there were certain books that weren't available to the black people. And when it comes to education, um, me personally, anything somebody is trying to keep from me, I want it more because uh, there's more to it that I need to know, and they want to keep it for, for some reason. It's just the nature of people to try to hoard things to give themselves an advantage. 
Um, so education is definitely the key. And that's a movie I highly advocate, uh, not to get too far ahead of myself um, here. But before we move to psychological, any other thoughts on educational um, projections and the importance of making those? I do want to add some things. When you, when you mentioned about hidden figures and children in schools and books, it reminded me of when Bria was, this time last year, Bria was getting ready to face adversities in school where blacks are a minority and the fact that she wanted to bring light to African-American history in the month of February and the lack thereof here showed how education, her being cultured, her being exposed to different things opened up the eyes to the narrow-minded of the people that we have living here. So education is truly Absolutely. We got a lot of people um, in our um, lineage that, that are hidden from us. And the question I always give myself, why don't they want us to know about all these great people? And why are the people who fall short um, so heavily publicized? Why, is, why are they always being put in front of us? I was in a class at work um, early in the week um, that I have to take to be certified as an instructor, and they were telling us, okay, don't do this, don't do that uh, when you're dealing with trainees uh, out here. And then they showed this one guy who was a serial rapist. Um, he was of Spanish descent, and they talked about him for about 20 minutes on that slide. And then on the slide with him, were two other gentlemen of African-American descent, and they didn't talk about them at all. Now, I wanted to shut the class down and say, well, who are these other two guys? Because I know how people like to send subliminal messages to a group. Uh, they want to make you view us in a certain way. Now, if, it, if the chart is about this guy who raped all these people, why do you have these two black guys up here and not tell us what they did? It's because they want to put a picture in your head that, you know, we should fear black people Black people are rapists, they're this and that and the other. Just by having them up there visually, whether the other members of the audience knew it or not, they were being made to think a certain way about black people, to classify us with the guy who had done wrong. And by talking about his wrongs and just having our pictures up there next to him, you know, and that's the way I see it. Yes, it is psychological indeed. And that's the way I see it when it comes to um, uh, why they try to hide our lineage from us so often because when you know what you're capable of you tend to want to do it because if somebody told you right now uh did you know that uh you could fly wouldn't you want to go outside and try to do it take off like superman and do it you know and there are so many things black people can do that they don't want you to know you can do so education is definitely uh the key as malcolm x would say as another guy booker wright would say um if you ever heard his story He didn't get a chance to get that education, but he wants his kids to get it uh, because he knows that that will change uh, the way he lives. And another one of my mentors um, that I learned a lot from, you know, and I learned a lot from people in terms of what to do and also what not to do. Love the guy to death, but, I, you know, I I work with him still to this day, and he's in his mid-70s, and he wants work but struggles to get it. He's an uh, um, architect. And he can't get work because at a certain point in his life, whether he knows it or not, he decided to stop learning. And when you stop learning, uh, you fall behind the wayside because the way other uh, speculative businesses are designed, you notice the iPhone 6 comes out, then the 7 comes out a year later, and so on and so forth. People want to continue to generate money so the world is ever-changing so that people can continue to feed themselves. So that because once you give them their money one time, you don't want to sell something one time because you got to eat every day. So that the world is continually changing, and to keep up with it, learning has to be adopted as a lifelong endeavor until you decide that you have enough and you don't want to learn anymore. Uh, but not to beat that dead horse. Uh, psychological development and projection. Where am I now? Why am I always happy? Why am I always sad? Why am I always depressed? psychological projections, and how am I going to get to where I need to be? Any thoughts on that and why that's important with the business of me? Well, I'll speak on that first with psychological. With me, the way I think I do now is practicing. I don't listen to any rap. 
I'll be straight honest with y'all. Listen, no rap, no heavy metal, anything of that. It's nothing but gospel, uh, instrumental music now because I feel like that feeds the depression and all the the bad thoughts a lot of times that we have. So we can't go out there and be a, a good business because we have trash in our mind. As the Bible say, what you put in is what you get out. So basically, that's how I try to live my life and teach my kids with quotes as motivational quotes as you can accomplish the world if you put your mind to it and things of that nature. So. And as you look in the Bible, it, it talks about Jesus as being black, but you got pictures all over the world showing that he's a mulatto. Because guess what? Yep. That psychological warfare against you already, as the, the two black men against the Hispanic he was talking about, it's psychological warfare they're using on you to basically keep you depressed and keep you in poverty. But if you used to know, if you know Martin Luther King was your uncle, that'll make you want to do battle. If you knew Booker T. Washington, or uh, Frederick Douglass, or any of those famous guys with your family members, it'll make you want to do battle because you wouldn't want to disappoint them. Yep. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you 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 dead on it. Um, and I was talking to uh, my wife Tisha earlier, and she she's a um, second year psychology student. Um, and she was talking about um how so many of us uh have a hard time getting past the fact that uh, someone hasn't apologized to us or someone has hurt us, and we need to take those feelings and uh, bring them into the now and stop reaching for the past. And, and the future, we need to own that now to determine where it is that we want to go as far as our well-being and our development as a whole business. And um, I think that was a very good insight. And she said that one method a lot of us need to do, um, because – our psychological state can hold us back in terms of, of reaching our overall goal. A lot of us need to use uh, what she called the empty chair method, just to put a chair in front of you and nobody has to be sitting into it, and then just uh, tell how you feel, why you feel that way, and um, to, to air those feelings and grievances out in the open. And even if you don't get an apology, at least you were able to get it off your, your chest. And a lot of people still haven't gotten over the fact that nobody's apologized to us for enslaving us, bringing us here, that that sort of thing. So any thoughts on how that could hold you back? Well, from a psychological standpoint, the business of me, I just look at it as it is what it is, and I know I know what direction I want to go and I know what I want to accomplish. Looking at the business of me overall across all of us, like our peers and colleagues and those, you know, looking at us as a people, like, we were saying earlier, it's a psychological weapon already developed against us, and that's like one of our hugest hurdles. Because we we talked this a couple of webinars ago. You know, the media portrays us constantly in a negative light. Like you said, you said in that class, they talked about a Hispanic guy and showed the two brothers, and never talked yeah. about what they've done. You know, it's it's, even con- it's constant. It's a it's a constant it's a constant struggle because no matter how hard you want to be positive, you want to do the right thing, you want to look, you go in the inner city, they have nothing but negative, you know, we go down to Chicago and do a survey, what do they have positive before them? You know, but they can yeah. tell you, they can tell you how many of their friends they had to put in the ground last week, you know, in the last, over the course of the last year, the last couple of years, you know, like, so psychologically, they're, they're beat, they're, they're broken, because there's nothing, there's very few positive outlets projecting anything positive, you know, Black History Month coming up. And as much as, you know, it sounds like as a kid, oh, man, this sounds cool as black history when I get to learn about, you know, those before me. But it's kind of pathetic that, you know, in this day and age, we're relegated to a month. Like, yeah. you know, Absolutely. so psychologically, hey, and the shortest month of the year. Psychologically, like, oh, it's February. I'm going to learn about Gary Morgan and, you know, great black inventors and, you know, our, contrib- our con- what we've contributed to society and history and stuff like that, but we're relegated to a month. And like we were saying earlier, educational, you know, we're cut off from our past. Like our, you know, it's sad to go pick up a history book. My history doesn't start until my ancestors came over on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's not right at all. Um, It's just very, very, very powerful. uh, Some of the things that people allow and that people try to use to hold others back. Um, so it's something to be mindful, and I think these three, in my opinion, uh, all culminate and contribute or take away from that value system and leaping forward, investment in others as far as projections go. Uh, me, here are my thoughts, and I would love to hear your, your yours uh, afterwards. Investment in others. Sometimes 
the time, the energy, the effort, and the resources we put into others can detract from our health and fitness, our immediate needs, and our development in terms of spiritual education and psychological and even our value system. So I would like to hear what you guys think about that. Um, How important is it to you to monitor what you invest in the other people? Yeah, that I, I'd like to put put in on that um, investment of others. You know, it, it all has a takes effect on on uh, me as a business as a whole, right? Because you, like you say, all that stuff that we put into somebody else is detracting from from the, our health and fitness, our spirituality. And then once we put it into somebody and we don't they don't get it back, that that, that effect, then affects the psychological. Of why am I doing what I can do to help you out or do this for you? And then turn around, and you don't support me in a, in a way that I feel like you should support me, or in, the, in that kind of, in that aspect. And then, it, and then it has effect on you as, as a business of me. And we we we'll go back down to to the kids and to our, our family support system when they see you down because you put so much out there for the world, and the world giving you nothing back. You still it, it brings you down. So your business is suffering, and not only your business, but the legacy you're leaving is your business is suffering because you don't, you don't bring it, you don't get, you feel like you're not getting it back. So it, it all ties in and it makes you want to shut down and not, and not invest in others. Just keep it off for yourself and, and your yep. immediate close circles. Get my thoughts. And I, don't, I can't say it no better than that. Anybody else? Hit the, hit the, hit the nail. That's, that's, that was a proverbial nail on the head. Like, you know, I tell, I tell my friends, it's a, it's a, cooperation, not a competition. Like we're supposed to collectively come together, work together and help each other accomplish our goals and whatnot. And, you know, sometimes you got, you know, um, I got friends I grew up with. I don't talk to anymore just because we're in two different places. Like, I don't have the resources, time, energy, or effort to invest in them. You know, I've got friends that I've known over my military career and it's, you know, like, Hey man, I'm trying to do this. You know, I give my input and my, in, my, insight and whatnot, you know, if I can help them, I can help them, but it's, you know, what do I personally get out of it, or what am I contributing to it, like, sometimes you just step back and look at the situation, we like, you know, does it make me feel better as a person to help them out, or is it, you know, is there a hindrance to me, like, psychologically, can I deal with that, like, absolutely, and I don't never want to be the kind of person to be mistaken for someone who's promoting selfishness, because we should invest in others and we should invest in our um, community. Um, The thought here in business of self is awareness of where those investments are taking us. Not that you should want anything in return, because I know our spiritual brothers on the line will tell you that the right hand shouldn't know what the left hand is given. Um, But when it comes to a value system tying back into investment in others, again, I was talking to Tisha earlier this morning, and she said one thing she witnessed uh, as a psychological psychology student is that sometimes people's um, values aren't lined up properly. So they might be giving their all to somebody, but that person doesn't value it in the way that you do. So before you give so much to somebody, you have to make sure that your values are aligned. Like say, for instance, if I'm giving all of my time to a person, this person might not value time at all. They might just want money instead of time, you know. So we have to make sure that those things are in line so that there aren't any miscommunications and there's a return on investment. And and the return on investment is what we expected. Any thoughts on that? I I have a thought on that. Basically, as you said, time investment. Basically, I think whenever you're doing a business proposal, as you being a business yourself, you should basically put out what you're your you're trying to gain out of it and what your goals is when you're investing in other people so you have a clear defined lines because you can't have two business that merge together and not know what you're going to do when you merge together it's like AT&T when they brought out all these businesses right here basically time warning all these things you got to understand hey this is what we're going for this is what we want this is what we want from back from you guys so we got to understand we can't go into a business meeting with somebody else and don't put out what we want or we left hurt or we have less invested too much in somebody and you're not getting what you thought you was going to get out of it. We have to make our guidelines and basically what we're trying to do. got to let the person know, basically. Absolutely. Any other thoughts to go with that?
Denise's two cents on investing in others. I believe people are in your, in your life for three different reasons. A season, a reason, and a lifetime. And it's just exactly. a matter of where they play out in that. Yep. Absolutely agree with that. Who, who else has something to add to what Miss um, Scott just said? Okay. And I'm pushing a little bit forward here. Um, and going away from this, and I know I'm not preaching to the choir here because most of the people here in this webinar understands this. But we're recording, and it's for the folks that visit our site and uh, uh, children out and abroad who can learn something for it. I just want them to go away seeing and understanding that we are each a work in progress. And periodically, we have to do self-inventory, have a business meeting on self, and looking at it in similar ways than, as, as what we just did just now in that quad chart. And then after that, we need to meet with our partners sometimes and look at that partnership in the same way. And then afterwards, have a franchise meeting, the entire family. And this is how we project where it is we're going and see if that projection is where we want it to go and see what kind of things we can implement into our lives to make sure that we end up going where we want to go. Any thoughts on this before we press forward? Hey, Gus, Jabari. I really like I really like that slide. The way that we start with that self evaluation and then we share uh, what we have going on in our lives and then ultimately we expand from that as we expand it to our family. I believe our family members are the most difficult um, relationships that we're going to have. As far as expectation management, when you look at your life, the most difficult people to have the proper expectation management for are your family members, your brother, your sister, your cousins, because they demand a lot more from you, and it's almost from a entitlement viewpoint as opposed to a viewpoint that where they really want to see success. And it's very, very uh, challenging uh, when you're dealing with with your family members. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you. Um, and I think that sort of uh, falls in line with this one, that investment in others, man. Um, because a lot of times we don't know or realize how much of a strain those outside influences are having on us uh, in terms of our health and fitness and our needs not being met, and how those interactions are pulling us back from our spiritual development and taking us away from education and our better judgment and psychologically breaking us down and making us to lose values. Uh, so I, I definitely agree and love what you just said, uh, Brother Jackson. Anybody else want to add on to that? Okay, not to belabor uh, this uh, meeting any longer, I just want to uh, really take my hat off to a young man, 12-year-old uh, Clarence Kingston. Uh, he, and, uh, he and I speak uh, periodically over the months, and I've been talking with him uh, on and off for a couple years now uh, since we started this site. And his mom sent a picture. He just got his yellow belt. He, you know, has been uh, labeled in his school system in New York as, as a kid who's troubled and who's going nowhere, but his mom didn't want to stand for that. You know, she didn't give up on him, and she still hasn't given up on him, and she's not going to give up on him. And she's pushing him in every way possible to be more than what the school system tries to tell him that he is. They try to tell him he uh, has uh, – disorders in terms of behavior and being explosive in certain situations. So she put him in Taekwondo, and uh, uh, just recently he earned his uh, yellow belt. So hats off to him, and you can go to our website and read more about uh, what's going on with him. And there's a ton of kids out there like him that I encourage each of you to get to know when you're out in your communities. And lastly, um, and which I'm going to keep it recording because uh, it seems like our best dialogue uh, comes out at the end of these things after we're finished with any formal presentation. 
I just want to recommend these two movies. I, I just watched them both. And I think Fences uh, was really good um, as far as uh, what we just talked about, the business of self. Uh, and Denzel, uh, his words are uh, as director that this movie is about that male father figure and how he manifests his pain onto his sons because his father's pain was manifested onto him. And the cycle goes on and on. And I think this is a great movie that portrays that. And I encourage everybody to sit down and watch it with their kids one time and then maybe come back a couple months later and watch it with their kids um, and give them some uh, guidance and some interpretation along the way. And even do some introspection to look at yourself to see uh, how am I making some of these same mistakes um, as, uh, as, as generational curses. You, you're definitely right, uh, uh, Sister Scott. And, and just look at yourself through, through this guy's lenses um, because it's a very profound movie, and I, and I love it, and I'll watch it over and over again. And also Hidden Figures, I recommend that because like what we said on the uh, chart with Serena Williams and the other lady who ended up in jail who didn't realize how she got herself there, at least that's what her face said. Uh, I like these two characters on the end uh, because they took action to make sure that they were going where they wanted to go. And you can watch the movie and you can see how they did that. They use education as a means to doing so, to setting themselves up to be where the ball was going to be before the ball got there. And the character in the middle, middle uh, is uh, Catherine Goebel. I think she's phenomenal um, figure in black history. She's one of those ingenious people like what one might call LeBron James, just destined for success, even though she put forth the hard work to get there. Um, her character in of itself is something that we should look at and be proud of as a people as well. But this is a great movie, um, and I just recommend that you do the same thing with this one as well. Just watch it with your kids uh, straight through, and then come back maybe a month or two later and then uh, revisit it with them and point out some of the uh, things that made these people successful. Um, but that's the conclusion of the formal part of this. You guys feel free to chop it up with me. I'll sit here uh, for the next however long you want to and talk. Hey, Gus, I just wanted to say thank you, man. This, uh, this is really a good uh, webinar we had this week. And I agree with you. These two moves right here are phenomenal. Uh, yes. I watched, watched both offenses. Like you say, the, the aspect of the, uh, his, his, what his father put him through, what he put through his kids. So it, it was really, really, really touching. And it, it hit home in a lot of aspects, as well as hidden figures. You know, behind the scenes, you, you, you never know who's behind the scenes pulling these strings, making things work out the way they do. Because just because we look different, or we might, or we sound different, don't make, don't mean that we're not just as equal or as smart as you. So don't, 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 don't play us to the left. When you see it's like that. Yep, absolutely agree with you, man. Anybody else out there got some thoughts? Anything. Don't even have to be on topic. Because I know it's a, a lot of thoughts, man, with all the stuff uh, you see in the news nowadays uh, with this new commander-in-chief we got. What's up, guys? I'm up here in the capital district, and it has been a trip. It is a uh, truly eye-opening and different experience. Oh, yeah. Definitely, brother. But time will tell, and we will persevere. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I was just telling uh, my kid the other day, uh, this ain't the first uh, – Caucasian president is the 44th. Uh, somehow we made it to where we at now. <laughs> Come back and then tweet. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, personally, I think we're going to be okay um, with, with all of this stuff. We just got to stick together as a community and uh, continue to uplift one another and keep talking. Keep talking and keep learning from each other. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like it's. Uh, I seen a meme earlier today. It says, "Remember when we didn't have cell phones and we used to, you know, hang out and talk and stuff like that?" It's, uh, yeah. Like, it's gone. It's 
it's a it's a huge disconnect. Like social media was supposed to bring us together, but I feel like it's separate. It's it's driven a larger wedge between us because we don't have human interaction anymore. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, we still do, but it's you know not on the scale it was. Go back 15 years ago versus now. Yep, absolutely, man. I see it all the time. You go into um, a classroom or a doctor's office. Back in the day, people had to uh, talk to the person next to them if they wanted, uh, you know, to ease their mind or release some uh, thoughts. But now, your sister, who's your best friend in the world, or your cousin or friend or whomever, who's 10,000 miles away is right at your fingertips on your smartphone. So Mm -hmm. if you had to have a toss-up to talk to this person or talk to the uh, person sitting next to you, you're going to pick the one that you know and love. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just one of one of those things, man. Um, you know, but I think we're doing okay, um, and, and we're gonna we're gonna be all right as long as we keep working with each other. I appreciate all you guys coming out, um, and I'm gonna turn off the recording here. And you guys feel free, man, to uh, stick around or just uh, say goodbye for now.